Okay, I'm recording now. So why do uh, why do I have to repeat processes like uh, prayer, praying every day, or uh, cancelling my beliefs, or meditating, whatever it is? Why do I have to repeat it? And um, and why do I lose my spiritual connection? I think um, well, one of the things I would say. Um, yeah, I'll just say, I'll first give a, a run up in case uh, people are at different levels of consciousness who are going to listen to this video. Um, when one is in a lot of, uh, at a low level of consciousness, like a lot of fear and a lot of thinking, and gets very, very easily distracted by phenomena in the world, people, places and situations, then, um, and, and you're starting with a spiritual mentor or group, and they sort of seems to be the indication from people, mentors, sponsors, uh, the group that you should do daily practice and, uh, and that it's not a good idea not to do daily practice, whatever the spiritual practice is. Um, I, would, I would agree with that. Daily spiritual practice is required when you've got a lot of stuff to do and you're not yet so spiritually advanced or in those flow states where nothing in the world can unhook you. Nothing in the world and nothing in your own programming and there's no you know, reservoirs of internal repressed feelings that could burp up and pull you out of a high level of consciousness. So, so at those low levels, it is good to do regular daily spiritual practice just to do a lot of clearing, even if you don't like it. Of course, there is there a way of doing spiritual practice which is not useful? Yes. Uh, and that can be slightly different for individuals, but um, um, what you know, like I'd say, like if you're really, really angry that you're doing spiritual stuff and you're really resentful and you think it's not going to work, um, that can lead, or you don't believe it will work, that can lead to it not working. So you might say, like, well, I'm doing everything this guy is telling me to do, and I still feel like shit. So then, um, then it could be, I mean, a good, a good group or a group a good mentor will have enough wisdom to know that if they're doing your daily spiritual practice and you need to clear something i mean there's another question if you're a high level of consciousness in a state of flow and bliss and the world is just uh, being witnessed to be beautifully unfolding synchronistically um you know uh, you might intuitively get the idea you know, is you don't need to do any spiritual practice but if you're if there's something in your life that you feel you is not is not good a limiting something is limiting in the world or in your feeling or your state of consciousness uh, then usually there is um there is some kind of inclination to want to clear that because you're not fully free and happy and in the in the flow but at low levels of consciousness it is good to do daily practice is it possible that daily practice will not work well it is possible um, and then if a good mentor or group would be able to intuit hey, uh, do you believe that this spiritual practice will not work for you, but you want it to work, but you think you've got a deep belief it won't work, then a good, a good mentor or a good group will tell you, look, you need to clear that before the spiritual practice will work. Or if you believe something like, this is so stupid, I, 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 can't, I don't want to do this. Or if you, if you don't like the type of practice you're doing and, 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 um, and don't want to, those things have to be cleared in you before the spiritual practice will work effectively. So you need to sort of clear, clear the stuff in a way that your resistance to allow the work to work so that you can let it go. So a bit of investigation might work. Why in general do most spiritual practices and themes ask you to do daily practice? Nearly, everything, nearly most things do. Um, the Course of Miracles says at Lesson 365, it assumes you're in a state of bliss and flow and can throw the book away and not practice any longer. That's true at, a, at that level of consciousness when you get into these kind of invincible flow present states where the world miraculously unfolds. Then yes, engaging your head to remember to do something to clear the world um, may not be appropriate at that time. Intuitively, you should be being guided intuitively whether you can just drop everything. But generally, if you've got anything going on in your life that is um, that you feel you want to clear, then the spiritual practice would be useful. Um, repeated spiritual practice. I am a great subscriber of repeated spiritual practice for this reason. 
even at, even if uh, even for people at advanced levels, not if you're Buddha. Does Buddha or Jesus need to do spiritual practice every day? No, no, of course not. Um, when they've transcended the world, the, their inner belief systems, their inner repressed feelings, and there's nothing in the world. They've transcended every single thing in the world: death of the body, death of loved ones. Um, the world blowing up, whatever it is, if they've transcended everything that can happen and there's nothing left in the world or inside their internal state that uh, can unhook them from a state of infinite presence, then, then no, you never ever have to do spiritual work again. How many people are like that, that reach that level? Very, I'd say very few. Um, I think many people can get into those advanced spiritual states of grace and flow and presence, but they lose it after a while. Um, and that means there's something unresolved, even though you go into those infinite states, there's some still some stuff limiting beliefs or stuff that's unresolved. So you're in a state of flow where everything is miraculously unfolding day by day and you're doing no spiritual practice, but it's like the universe will check you out. You know, maybe that something happens which suddenly makes you financially insecure and you lose your spiritual bliss. Or maybe something happens like a partner leaves you suddenly and you lose your spiritual bliss. So it's still like the universe is going, okay, you might be in bliss, but you haven't resolved everything that can happen in you and in the world that you're not unhookable. Or you're sorry, you're still hookable into something that might go internally or externally. So but generally, there is a, I mean, I'd say, if you ask me personally, uh, personally is an interesting question, but I, I think this is a tough world. There are, you know, this world, if someone goes into an state of extreme light, it's like you're clearing the whole world. For you to main, maintain happiness and bliss and flow state, it's like the world feeds off your energy. The whole world is gagging for someone who's in absolute light and bliss and emits joy and love and, and absolute freedom from themselves and the world. You know, that light is like sucked by the whole world. There's so much negativity in the world. There's so many people who, who won't be able to, who will want to pull you down. Unconsciously, they try and pull you down from that state. You can't be happy. You can't be blissed out right now. Don't you know there's a lot of lots of horrors? Don't you know I'm going through horrors? Don't you know the world's going through horrors? Come on, you should suffer along with us. That's totally uncompassionate for you to be happy all the time. Show show some uh, show some something else more negative. So you know, um, and um, anyway, that's another another thing. But uh, but generally, I think that you know, unless you're Buddha, uh, I'd say very. Few, I mean, some people go into temporary, very sort of advanced Buddhist st level states, but they still have things that can hook them out. So unless, but if you get into those states intuitively, let everything go and, and you will sustain that as long as you're fully clear of everything that can happen uh, in the internal and the external environment, whatever it may be, and you'll stay unhooked. Otherwise, if you fall, if suddenly fall out of those states, then you know those things need to be cleared the next time you go in for you, for those things not to pull you out. But generally for normal people, when I say normal people, more moderate levels of consciousness, uh, daily practice is like, um, it's like brushing your teeth. You know, who would say, okay, uh, you really did a good job brushing your teeth today. It's like absolutely clean. And um, don't worry about it. Just uh, throw your toothbrush away in the dustbin and just forget about it for the rest of your life. The problem with that is if you've got really, really clean teeth, a similar metaphor, um, in theory, you don't have to clean your teeth for the rest of your life. And they're clean now. They'll never get dirty again. You, you've done your job perfectly. But this world, it's very, very easy to have belief systems or to be succumb to the world that the feet somehow, if you don't have daily practice of toothbrushing, toothbrushing, brushing your teeth, then... Um, the teeth somehow seems to get dirty. So you'd have to do a lot of heavy work um, around food, around belief systems of what makes a teeth dirty. I don't know why I'm talking about teeth, but there you go. And, uh, and uh, to make sure that you could continue to live and never have to brush your teeth again. I mean, that's a lot of spiritual work. Um, is it possible? It is theoretically possible, uh, but, but would you want to do it? 
Okay, so, you know, we're in a 12 step program, so you have to do a step 10 every day. Even if you've got no resentments today, they might ask you as soon as you get one or do a, do a step 10 the next day. And I think that is good for most normal people because, you know, the world and your internal state will probably bring up resentments and fears on a daily basis. You're not that advanced that there's nothing ever to work on. So having that daily brush to make sure there's nothing there and nothing being picked up, I think is good in a 12th. Of course, in Miracles, it says do a lesson. It doesn't really say this, but it could be saying do a lesson every day until you get into the, um, the holy instant. And you'll know when you're in the holy, well, theoretically, 365 lesson is the end of the book. And you should be now in infinite, you know, the, in the infinite eternal now perfectly. And then you can, and it says, yeah, you can now throw your book away, never do any more spiritual practice. You are now in that holiness, you know, sort of Christ consciousness forever. You, I would say your intuition will let you know if you've reached the level of Buddha and Jesus and you never have to do. Otherwise, uh, if things are still bringing you down in the world and affecting you, then, you know, it might be um, worth considering daily practice. I mean, it may not. At advanced level, sometimes daily practice and all the things other people do start falling out the window. And there is almost like a different set of things apply to someone at a very advanced level of consciousness. Okay, so um, did I answer all of that? Um, oh, yes. Oh, I'll do that on the next video. Okay, I'm going to stop the thing recording now. Let's press stop. I think someone wants to.